Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio, and I'm glad that you could join us again. We're going to have a conversation this morning with Chris Balzan with GMGI It's uh, in Gloucester, Mass. And she's going to talk with us about um, a workforce skills capital grant that they've received so that they can well expand their academic operations. Welcome to the program, Chris Balzan. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks, Neil. Uh, a bit of your background. I did uh, mention, of course, that you're at uh, GMGI. Uh, a little bit, bit of background about yourself. Sure. I actually joined the organization just six months ago. I had spent the past 10 years at MIT Sloan's Business School, and I had a prior background in operations, entrepreneurship, and finance at uh, J.P. Morgan. Okay. But I had become aware of what uh, the Gloucester Marine Genomics Institute was doing about five years ago, had volunteered with them, helped them develop a mentoring program. And when the role of COO opened up last spring, I was excited to throw my hat in the ring. It's been a great ride for the last six months. I love this team. You um, started a mentoring program. Um, exactly what is it that GMGI is involved in that excited you so? So GMGI has a three-pronged approach to its mission. Um, and one of them is our Gloucester Biotechnology Academy. The Biotech Academy trains area um, recent high school graduates to become biotech lab technicians, and our graduates go on to work in some of the best life sciences and biotech companies in Boston, Cambridge, and on the North Shore. A number of years ago, I was in touch with New England Biolab. Um, the CEO, Jim Ellard, is a close contact of mine, and New England Biolabs has been a supporter of GMGI since its founding. They have volunteered scientists from their lab to mentor the students in our academy. And it's a fantastic program where they work with the students, not only during the nine months that they are in our vocational program, but for their first year in their real jobs, when a lot of students can kind of slip through the cracks and struggle as they make that adjustment from school to employment. Now, are we talking just high school students? Um, are these students going to go on to higher education or are they going to be employed right into biomanufacturing out of high school? That's a great question. So our students range in age from 19 to 26. Mm -hmm. um, a few, a couple of uh, exceptions to that. We had a few older students in the mix over the years. But all of our students have a high school diploma, and they participate in the program. It starts with six months of laboratory and classroom training, and then they go on to a guaranteed paid three-month internship with employer partners um, throughout Massachusetts. That lab training, that intense internship in these high-tech labs, gives them the ability to start a career right off the bat. Many of our students begin working for their internship employers or other employment partners that we have relationships with. And some of our students have decided that this actually is the path to college that they might be looking for. And um, we have some of our graduates who have gone on to study biology and chemistry in four-year degree programs after working in biotech. So we have a 86% rate of students who go on, who have graduated, who go on to full-time employment in biotech or pursuing a science degree in college. You know, we see so many advances in biomanufacturing. Is there a, a need for this, uh, for this type of training? I mean, is there an unmet need for skilled and knowledgeable people in, this, in these fields? Yes, which is exactly why we applied for this grant in the fall. Governor Baker had um, issued an open call for applications for workforce skills capital grants. And we applied for just under a million dollars to be able to expand what our academy currently teaches to include biomanufacturing. And this is because we have seen rapid growth in the past decade, mostly aided by the exponential improvement in cell programming tools and the massive investment we've seen in the biomanufacturing field has left companies um, needing entry-level workforce folks trained in the technical lab work that's required for this high-volume technical manufacturing. And many of these roles don't require a four-year college degree. So our team put together a proposal to build out another classroom and a high-tech lab where we can train students in these skills. 
Uh, we were so grateful to receive the grant. Um, it also required a one-third matching program. So we're, we're receiving $940,000 from the state of Massachusetts and another $300,000 from corporate sponsors who are going to help us make this a reality. Are there any exchange programs at GMGI as far as this uh, biomanufacturing academy is concerned for uh, highly skilled and knowledgeable people from the United States? Is that something that GMGI is involved in? No, not currently, Neil. We are really focused on educating area youth. Um, One of the goals of the Gloucester Marine Genomics Institute is to really help catalyze the Cape Ann economy. Mm -hmm. which was a motivating factor when our organization was founded. Local scientists, entrepreneurs, and business folks were observing that Gloucester was struggling with the decline of the fishing industry. And they devised a strategy that would help catalyze the local economy by bringing science to Gloucester in a meaningful way, again, focused on the ocean. Um, So that is why our research institute leverages marine genomics for identifying ways to improve fisheries management, find ways to improve our oceans, and to identify potential sources from the ocean for human therapies. Um, The academy, the goal of the academy is to not only help area youth connect with meaningful employment, but to also find ways to fill a workforce gap and attract biotech companies to moving to Cape Ann. And as far as uh, the criteria to be selected, is this um, open to any student that has an interest, or is there a a GPA requirement or anything like that that's involved? Uh, That's a great question, especially something we've been very focused on this week because we're actively recruiting for this fall's entry class, um, the class of 2021. There is no GPA requirement. We do require a high school or equivalency equivalency diploma. Um, There is a short essay that we ask. We want to understand students' motivation and interest in the program, but there's no prerequisite classes other than the high school diploma. We also will do an interview, and that's really just to gauge, you know, that there's a passion there and a commitment to developing these skills and an interest in working in a really hands-on environment. With the current environment right now and everybody working primarily remotely, we're doing these reviews via Skype or Google Hangout or Zoom, whatever our applicants require. And what about any hands-on training at different facilities around the area um, while they're attending these uh, academy trainings? That's a great question also. So our lab, um, I wish you could come visit it at some point, our lab is state-of-the-art, which is why these grants are so important. It's very expensive to create a teaching facility like that, and we're so grateful we have the support of the state. Um, The current lab that we've been operating in was built with a grant from the Massachusetts Life Sciences Center, and the students spend, we've kind of flipped the traditional learning method on its head. The students spend about an hour learning theory and technique in the classroom setting, and then they spend the rest of the day working in small groups in the lab, doing all hands-on work, really mastering techniques like pipetting. Most of our students are folks who maybe struggled in high school and weren't connecting to college or career, and they find this really hands-on environment inspiring, exciting, and it's made science so accessible to people who previously didn't know that a career in science was an option for them. And then Following six months of training like that, they go on to work with our employer partners. Like I said, they're in the North Shore of Massachusetts, Boston, and Cambridge. So it's a nine-month program in total. Where can our listeners get some more information online about uh, this program and about GMGI? Uh, They can check out our website, www.gmgi.org. We've got great information about the Academy and um, some more details about the Workforce Skills Grant we were just awarded. And they can also find us on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Thank you so much, Chris Bolzan, for joining us here on Health Professional Radio this morning. Been a pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks so much for your time, Neil. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Chris Bolzan. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download it, SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.